Hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here. You know, we've been talking quite a bit about the effects of being born by cesarean section in terms of outcome prediction with respect to the health of a child and even an adult. Uh, and again, I've, as I've said many times, there's certainly a time and a place for C-section. It is a life-saving procedure. Uh, some have estimated that about 10 to 15 percent of births here in America uh, are requiring cesarean section. Uh, we know that about a third of all births, about 33 percent of all births in America is now via C-section. So it's really important that we stay on top of the literature to understand what might be the mechanisms uh, that are uh, um, involved here in the detrimental effects of being born by C-section. Having said that, I have quoted the work in the past of Dr. Maria Dominguez Bello, who has described the technique in humans of actually saving uh, a bit of the microbiome from the birth canal uh, and inoculating a child's a newborn's mouth and eyes and nose uh, with material from the birth canal as a way of giving that child an exposure to the types of microbes that he or she would have received had he or she been born vaginally. Really interesting information. She has a recent paper in the journal Nature that talks about recovery of specific birth canal organisms up to six months later in the stool of a newborn, uh, now a child, a uh, uh, neonate, who has in fact been um, exposed to this type of procedure. So having said that, uh, her group at NYU has recently put out a paper uh, just uh, this past couple of weeks. Uh, it's entitled Increased Weight Gain by C-Section, Functional Significance of the Primordial Microbiome. And what they've done in this study, it is an animal study, it is a rodent study. They simply compared uh, the weight of these uh, laboratory rodents uh, born either C-section or born vaginally over time. And uh, interestingly, uh, their group calls a, calls a very important point out, and that is unlike humans, or at least Americans, uh, born by C-section, these animals did not receive antibiotics. We know that here in America, if a woman has a C-section, then antibiotics are considered basically mandatory. And we do know that antibiotics also have an effect upon the microbiome. Having said that, uh, the group found some very interesting findings, and again, this is animal uh, work. But if you look at this first uh, image, this is change in body mass over time, uh, comparing those uh, animals born by C-section, which are seen in the uh, red curve, uh, versus those born by vaginal delivery in the blue curve. And interestingly enough, there was a significant difference in comparing it, as you see in this next slide, females to males. And it looks as if uh, females were far more susceptible to weight gain uh, when uh, they were born via cesarean section. And again, I think it's really important uh, to note that these are uh, this uh, laboratory situation is one in which no antibiotics were used. Uh, let me read from the discussion. Discussion, one limitation of this work uh, was uh, that we could not tell with precision when the phenotype means uh, uh, above uh, being overweight arose before weaning, which is the time when C-section offspring had already gained significantly more weight than the vaginally born uh, controls. But more importantly, uh, the researchers go on to say that unlike the procedure in humans, C-sections were performed in this work without the use of perinatal antibiotics. Now we know that antibiotics have a dramatic effect again on the microbiome. So again, this is a laboratory study with laboratory animals, but I think it drives home the point that there are significant changes in this case in, with respect to body weight that seem to be imparted when the uh, gut bacteria are uh, altered uh, via the process of being born by cesarean section. Interesting information, and we will continue to watch as this story evolves. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, and thanks for watching.